This land has been farmed by the Israel family for five generations. Here, the fight against climate change begins with what's under the ground. And these guys are all part of the plan. It's funny, you wouldn't think that the pigs would be combating it, but look at it. You see the manure on the floor, and that's going to be collected and reapplied to the, the fields as a natural fertilizer source. Five years ago, Brett Israel joined the family business with his father Jamie and grandfather Carl. They switched over to organic, which means they don't use any chemicals to grow feed for their livestock. But Brett had another pressing concern. Farmers are on the front lines of climate change. We see it every day. You know, we often joke and, and talk on the farm that we're dependent on Mother Nature, whether she be motherly or not so motherly. There we go right there. Yeah. So the family also embraced a growing trend called regenerative agriculture. We farm it and we still say, wow, <laughs> Yeah. that's pretty good. It's essentially a set of farming practices that help rebuild yeah. the soil. That's got good smell. Oh, yeah. Look at the little guy. Brett says <laughs> earthworms and long root systems mean healthy soil. This is the nitrogen fertilizer right here, all those nodules. They planted alfalfa, oats, and winter wheat instead of leaving this land bare over the winter. It's a practice known as cover cropping. It helps the soil absorb carbon and reduces greenhouse gas emissions. This cover crop might be not feeding my physical livestock or feeding people. It's feeding the biology below our ground right now. For decades, farmers have been evolving the ways they care for the soil. Many have all but stopped tilling the land, especially on the prairies, offsetting some of their agricultural emissions. But experts say more is needed in the fight against climate change. So we're just going to go up and check the system. Here at the University of Guelph, agrometeorologist Claudia Wagner-Riddle has started to study how much carbon regenerative practices could actually store in the soil. It's taking the carbon out of the atmosphere, keeping it in compounds that are not easily accessible to be returned to the atmosphere again. That's the magic of the soil carbon sequestration. So if we look at this field, uh, we could say this is a wasted opportunity because we could be growing crops at this time. She's comparing data from this conventional field to data from a cover crop. This field is um, uh, a potential loss of carbon. It's not helping offset climate change uh, to the same extent that this field that has the growing crops would be able to. Still, it can take years to see benefits from regenerative practices, and only if farmers commit long-term. To make a difference, this has to be implemented large-scale uh, across the country, basically. While the science is still evolving and it's not mainstream... Uh, there's about 250 U's here. 70-year-old Blaine Jertis has been pitching the philosophy for decades. I've been doing this 20 years now. To kind of step out and do something different gives a lot of people a bit of fear. In southeastern Saskatchewan, Jertis frequently rotates livestock to graze in small pastures for short periods of time. He says it prevents soil erosion and encourages regrowth. If we want to take carbon from up here and put it down, we need to keep leaves green as long as possible. Jerta says adopting these new practices can take extra work, money and education, but that it's worth it. He says his land absorbs more carbon than his neighbours and that soil testing proves it. On this farm we are sequestering enough carbon to uh, more than offset 400 Canadians' footprint. How confident or exact are you in the measurement system? Well, that's, that's the great scientific debate. So now, Jertis is helping with a pilot project funded by the American food company General Mills. Jertis works with local farmers like Gary Richards, who's been improving his farm's ecosystem for years. Good job. Looking General right. Mills is testing his soil and counting birds and insects on his land. The company is looking for ways to reduce its carbon footprint. They're investing a lot of money on this farm and, and the other farms to collect data and, and to quantify this. So we'll put something else under there to stay green. 
The push to quantify his impact on greenhouse gas emissions, now a marketing campaign too. If we were carbon negative, then that oats that we grow here could be marketed as carbon negative. So there's the chemical, the yeah. physical, and the biological yeah. aspects of the soil. Once the results are in, he hopes to also sell carbon offset credits and believes other farmers will buy into regenerative agriculture if it makes good business sense. Incentivize good management practices to build soil, to build ecosystems, to sequester more carbon. Farmers will do it, you know, if they're going to get paid to do it. While regenerative agriculture still has much to prove, Brett Israel is resolute. You, know, you can have a global problem and make practical solutions right here on the family farm. He believes that improving his soil to fight climate change is his way of making sure this farm will stay in the family for generations to come. Bonnie Allen, CBC News, Regina.